Good afternoon, everybody. Wake up, gimbal. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can fix this. All right. Sorry to be doing this right in the middle of all of this live stream. How's everyone doing today? Thank you for joining me. I'm going to let a few more people join us. In the meantime, enjoy this beautiful day here out in the Eel River. Let's see if I can get my device to cooperate with me. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Hey everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm an interpreter here with California State Parks. And I'm talking to you once again, live from the banks of the South Fork of the Eel River. And the Eel River is one of my favorite places on the planet because not only is it a river that I spent a lot of my childhood visiting, I'd come up from the Bay Area to visit my grandparents up here on this river and find a good place to camp and swim. The Eel River is also one of my favorite places because it is home to the world's tallest trees, the Coast Redwoods. And specifically this spot, Humboldt Redwood State Park, is home to the world's tallest forest. This forest of trees. So as we kind of just take a little look here, let me, I'm going to try to set down my tripod a little bit. Now the Eel River some reason my gimbal wants to let's try to see if I can adjust the how much it's let's try that will that work that might have done it hopefully all right so the eel river is located in northern California specifically Humboldt County California's north coast I just got finished giving a home learning program, a ports home learning program, so fresh off of that, got some images here that I brought for that, so I might as well use these today. So we are located right here, just about two hours south of the Oregon border, about five, five hours north of San Francisco, here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. Now I know a lot of you are missing the state parks today because you are sheltering in place and you have been for a long time. face when you're out in public or shelter or sheltering in place or social distancing and so I'm just really grateful that people are doing that because it means that everyone will have a, a much easier time and probably hopefully a sooner time of being able to get back out into our parks but until then I want to bring a little bit of the park to your house to your home or wherever you are located right now so sounds like there's a little bit of wind noise I don't know if I'll be able to do much about that let's see if I can kind of adjust it is that time of day you know three in the afternoon is when we start to get our um, we start to get our afternoon winds that come up these these uh, rivers especially this time of year so I wanted to spend a little bit of time today talking about one particular part about this uh, this river and um, on my Tuesday talks here I'm always talking about my favorite animal salmon and since I just did a since I just did a, um, a, a home learning a ports home learning program talking to several hundred people um, about our salmon life cycle that's pretty fresh in my mind so I wanted to go through the salmon life cycle real quick and um, and go through a couple of the different um, challenges that these fish overcome and also talk a little bit about where this life cycle takes place and um, or where different stages of this life cycle take place so Hopefully by now, 
if you've been joining me for a couple weeks, you probably know why I love salmon so much. That salmon are these incredible animals that overcome all kinds of obstacles. They've got amazing adaptations. They've got lots of different uh, ways to overcome the challenges in their lives. And whether it's through their powerful fins, whether it's through their muscular body, their internal navigation system, which is known as uh, uh, the, um, their, or their ability to kind of have this mental map or this yeah, mental map of the Earth's magnetic field. All of these are really important. So not everyone knows the different stages of the salmon life cycle though. So let me just adjust my height here so that I'm not just looking up at you all. See if the gimbal can handle that much better. All right. Glad you like the scenery. Thank you for joining us, everybody. So, there are six different stages of this life cycle. And the first stage of the salmon life cycle is the egg stage. Let's see, I just had that picture. There we go. The egg stage. Now, the eggs are only about the size of a green pea. And these eggs are laid in the winter time. So in the fall and winter, the rains begin to come. As I mentioned last week about our rainy season, how we are in this, temp this, this um, Mediterranean climate where we have the rainy season in the winter and we have a dry season in the summer and not much in between. Um, so these salmon return, they lay their eggs and they make a nest. They use the gravel that's in the stream bed. They find areas of the river where the stream is kind of moving swiftly, just kind of at the top of a swift area. And that's where they build their nests. Now, these eggs spend about 40 days before they hatch. And they don't have a parent or guardian to take care of them. They're just under that nest, protected by the, net, by, by the shelter that their mom built for them. After the egg stage, these salmon move to the next stage of their life cycle, the alvin stage. Now the alvin kind of look a little bit like a tadpole. They have something left over from the egg. They have this pouch called a yolk sac. Sorry about the wind there. So this yolk sac could be like if you were born with a lunchbox attached to your stomach. It's gonna provide them about maybe a couple weeks worth of food before they are ready to go out on their own and absorb that yolk and leave the nest. The next stage of the salmon life cycle is a little bit longer term of a stage and we call that stage the fry. So the fry stage, go ahead and hold your pinky out in front of you if you can. That's how big these fry are. They're very small. Let's see it, there we go. Now the fry stage of the salmon life cycle is the most critical stage because this is the stage where they are moving down this river en route to the ocean. And this river, though it seems very tranquil, tranquil and peaceful right now, can be pretty treacherous if you're a little pinky-sized fish. There are lots of predators that might try to eat these fish. There are there are mergansers and other birds. There are belted kingfishers. There are reptiles like, for example, our garter snakes. So those are other examples of um, the, some of the dangers out here. But there's also maybe swift water. These fry, it takes them several years to get out to the open ocean. And so in the meantime, they're kind of sitting ducks out here. They're gonna have to depend on those par marks, that camouflage. Now the next stage of the salmon life cycle is called the smolt stage. The smolt stage would be kind of like the teenage stage of the salmon life cycle. Almost. Oh, I just had it. There we go. The smolt stage, they're a little bit bigger. They lose those par marks, become more shimmery and shiny. They spend several months or even a year in the estuary, the mouth of the river, where salty water and fresh water mix together. And finally, they've entered the open ocean, the salty water environment, as adult salmon. 
The adult stage of the salmon life cycle is a little bit mysterious in the sense that people know the adult salmon who go out and fish for them. Because that's usually where you find uh, fishing boats catching lots and lots of salmon. But they travel thousands of miles sometimes. Some of the salmon that come out of this river might end up uh, up the coasts of Oregon or Washington or even farther north as they're looking for krill and shrimp and other um, small creatures to eat. So finally they make their return. The final stage of the salmon life cycle, which is the spawner. Now if any of you have kids that play Minecraft, you might have heard this term spawner. Spawning just means to reproduce. So this is the stage when they become colorful. This, I want you to guess, do you think this salmon is a male or a female based on this picture? So right now, if you're shy about texting it, give me a give me a thumbs up if you think it is a female. Give me a laughing emoji if you think it's a male. I'll give you a moment. Thumbs up, female, laughing emoji. You think it's a male? I'm hoping it's just a delay because I can't think I can't believe there'd be that many shy people. All right, so someone guessed female. All right. The answer is it's a male. You can tell it's a male because it has that hooked jaw called a kipe. Now the hooked jaw is sort of like the antlers of the fish world, of the salmon world. The males grow this weird jaw when they come back up into the rivers, and uh, the, the females don't get that, but they do all get very colorful. This is a coho salmon. And yes, uh, Sarah, you're right, it is a male. And now I'm seeing all my all the guesses pop in. There was a little bit of a delay. Oh yeah, I think people were pretty pretty spot on when they guessed male. There was a there was a few female guesses in there. Now, I have seen one picture of a salmon that looked like this, or that a, a female salmon with a little bit of a kipe. Um, so it does sometimes happen. It's really rare, though. This salmon life cycle is super important because these salmon, they come back up this same river that they were born. They do this every year. And they've done this for eons. And so if you were to take one of these salmon, when they're a little fry and and plop them in a different river, they would probably not know what to do, or very likely they would come back up into this river again, despite where they came from. Um, these salmon have a mental map that they're born with that is a map of the place where they were, were um, born. It's a, that, that, as I mentioned a little bit ago, the magnetic field. And so salmon are really dependent on being able to get back to where they came from. Good job, Sarah, you got it. <laughs> Give yourself a round of applause. So salmon, um, they really, uh, they depend on being able to get back. Now there are some obstacles that happen in some of these rivers. Um, there are some obstacles that are man-made obstacles like dams and, and uh, culverts and things like that. And there are some other obstacles like droughts. Sometimes you don't get enough rain or snow and maybe there's not enough water for these salmon to make their way back up. And so this is where we start to see that human activities, specifically the activities of, of the settlers that kind of arrived in this area and, the, and commercial fishing and things like that have an impact on these salmon. And so because a lot of us eat salmon and because a lot of us are um, big fans of maybe some tasty salmon, and maybe also enjoy drinking water and our water resources, that means we have a special responsibility to make sure that we're also providing enough space, enough room, enough resources for our salmon as well. And there's a lot of ways that you can help salmon by either making sure that if you're eating salmon to eat sustainably caught salmon, maybe if you are um, wanting to do some restoration work or maybe some volunteer work, planting trees is 
a really important volunteer work that that um, a lot of community organizations do. Trees are super important for salmon. If any of you saw my live stream a few weeks ago, you probably understood why salmon need trees. And so those are things that we can do, even making sure that our water is clean. Maybe thinking about what you are doing to help make sure that water in your area and your environment is clean. Maybe there are friends of certain rivers, like groups of, of, of uh, community people who are maybe forming something more like the Friends of the Eel River, like here, or maybe you have uh, a Friends of a River in your area as well. So those are things that you can do to help uh, our water and also help our salmon as well. So I want to thank you for joining me on this brief little look into the life cycle of the salmon. Um, the stage, uh, the different stages of the salmon life cycle are all really critical. And here in the Eel River, where you've got the egg stage and the alvin stage, the, the fry stage, and then the spawning stage as well, it's really important that these salmon are able to overcome some of the challenges that they might face. Otherwise, they're not going to make it to the next stage and then finally be able to return. So everyone, I want to Thank you so much again for joining me and for your participation. And uh, I cannot wait to see you all out here very soon in our parks and be able to um, maybe, maybe be able to guide you down to some of these waterways. Maybe you'll be able to find some juvenile salmon yourself. And maybe get to explore a little bit of the salmon habitat here on the Eel River in our beautiful Humboldt Redwood State Park. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Make sure to follow our live streams that are happening every day at 3 p.m. And uh, make sure to uh, do your do your part in sheltering, uh, sheltering in place and flattening the curve. Uh, make sure to follow us on North Coast Redwoods at our Facebook and our Instagram. And also, if you're wanting to do a home learning program, the course home learning program is pretty amazing. If you've got kids that are wanting to learn about salmon life cycle or maybe uh, Redwood ecology, jump onto the Ports Facebook page. It's Ports Program. Um, that's Facebook slash Ports Program. And uh, they would be really happy to have you uh, participate in that as well. So everyone have a great rest of your day. I'll see you on the trail.